All right, guys, now that the dust is settled, we are honored to be joined by this man freshly coming back to New Zealand after. And I keep saying this, but it's true. <laughs> Another historic evening in the history of combat sports. We're talking to, man, to the man behind the incredible City Kickboxing team. Joining us live from CKB himself, Eugene Behrman. Thank you so much for joining us on the show, man. It's great to have you. Yeah, good to be here, uh, uh, lads. You've always been uh, good supporters of uh, MMA in this region, in the region that I'm in. So I'm happy to be here. And supporters of you, huge, big fans of you. We're big, huge fans. Number one. <laughs> always a pleasure and honor to have you, man. I got to ask, what is it? What was that flight like home? Sort of reflecting and thinking about, you know, what a historic night that was, and. Israel and, and you and the team essentially slaying a demon in Alex Pereira. Not in the sense that he's a bad guy or anything, but just, you know, going in there three and oh, and then to sort of right that wrong, so to speak, and get such a spectacular win. How does it feel now knowing that uh, it's it's a win in the books for, for you and the boys? Yeah, I mean, obviously, tremendously satisfying um, uh, for us as a team. Uh, and, and for me personally as well, like I've I've uh, sat in front of that man four times now, and and to be honest, and three of those outings, I thought we were doing, and we were doing enough to win, and we were winning like reasonably comfortably, and uh, we couldn't get over the hump, so to speak. So um, to get over the hump in this last fight um, was just tremendously satisfying. Um, and then, you know, it's, Israel got the job done and uh, against a very, very dangerous, a very good opponent. When Israel lands those counter shots up against the cage, when do you know that it's over? Like, when did when did you realize, all right, we've got him? Uh, after after the first uh, right hand, it's not until the first right hand, um, I knew that we would not let him uh, I knew if we landed a big shot, we had worked on um, just that last, you know, like putting together the final shots to get him out of there, if it happened. Um, so, yeah, yeah, after the first right hand, I knew um, as well to get the job finished. Did you see it ever playing out like that in such a spectacular way where Israel was sort of playing possum against the cage? I mean, to, to a lot of people, people thought that he was hurt and people thought that he was going Alex's way. Um, I'm curious if this is in any way how you envision the fight actually playing out. Uh, yes, yes. Our job, uh, the coach's jobs was, well, I mean, we, we wanted to provide Israel with more opportunities for that to happen. And um, in order to do that, we changed our game plan quite dramatically to give them those more opportunities. Uh, I didn't, the whole possum thing, that was all his own intuition. That was his instinct and stuff. But we gave Israel some other options. And instead of moving left, moving right, going forward and clinching and mitigating uh, what's coming in front, we had to remind him that um, without giving away too much, that he can fight. He can fight mm -hmm. mid-range. He's done it his whole career. He's done it for 100 plus fights. And if he needs to fight, he can fight in that mid range and uh, he can land and he can make the other guy miss it in that space. And um, the whole, whole possum thing, that was him. But he knew he had the confidence through what we'd been doing uh, for, for, for 10 weeks uh, to, to stay in that pocket and exchange. And we let Israel know about some of the holes that were there, that we thought were there, um, especially with the with the last fight. And uh, he just took advantage of them. And then he, he was just, it was just masterful, masterful performance. Oh, it, it, it was absolutely incredible to watch. Just on that, on you reminding Israel about that he can fight, you did say to Megan Anderson on ESPN that you wanted him to look back at some of his past fights and so and take the shackles off himself, so to speak. Right, which is kind of fitting because he had the dog collar on, like in um, uh, ah, shit, I yeah, forget Unleashed. the movie with, with Unleash, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but but I feel like that was almost your your influence, not the collar itself, but just like that mindset of take the shackles off. 
I'm curious, where did these shackles come from, in your opinion? And when did you first notice them in his fights? The shackles come from being so dominant and so good at one particular range and being to, being able to pop everybody off and no one being able to touch you um, for so long because although you're fighting the best fighters in the world, their level, their level in a certain aspect of the fight is very low. And so Israel is able to dominate at a certain range and in that range, Israel used to fight a higher caliber of opponent. Um, and so he's never needed to go into this particular area or this particular space, given the caliber of opponents that he's fighting in that space have been at a lower quality. Now here, you're fighting one of the best stand-up fighters in the world, just like Israel. So now you have to bring back some of that old Israel um, you know, from, from 30, 40 fights ago and just remind him and let him know that he's a master on the out, on the outside range when they can't touch you, where they can't touch you, but he's also a master in that middle range. So um, we just really emphasize that. And that was the better way to go. Um, you know, but it, we would have been, we would have been, silly to try and teach Israel something different, something new. We just reminded him of some old tools, mm. of some old mastery that he's had before. We just jerked his memory and reminded him. It's like, this is you. You find this guy again. And uh, that's where we want this fight to hit. Mm. The hunter mentality, the unleashed mentality, um, you know, taking the shackles off, however you want to put it. This is a different version, or at least a uh, advanced version or at least a version of Israel that we haven't seen for quite some time. Do you see this version of Israel going forward in his future fights? Like things have kind of changed and moved forward kind of forever in a lot of ways. Like you've reminded him about some areas. I'm sure there are other areas you guys will be focused on depending what other opponents will be there. But do you kind of see this hunter mentality coming through other fights as well? Yeah, possibly, possibly, possibly it's jogged Azra's memory uh, and, and maybe he finds a little bit more of that. Um, but it's all it's all opponent dependent. I, I tell you what it's done is like you fight another high level. I mean, you know, like UFC fighters are, are, are great fighters, it's like they're, they're great fighters, but UFC fighters suffer from what all MMA fighters suffer from is that they just have never, a lot of them have never had a chance to specialize in one particular area and they've just never had that time there. So that's, it's, um, it's just different when you fight someone who's been at the highest level in, in kickboxing or Muay Thai or stand up, it's just a different, that's a different opponent. Like, you know, these guys, um, it's, a, it's a different level. That's what people don't understand. And it's, it forced Israel to get better because he had a high caliber of opposition. In terms of this, the stand-up, it's never obviously fought anybody anywhere near as good as Pereira. Not even close. No one he's fought has even been close to Pereira in terms of their stand-up ability. Mm. Um, I got to ask, man, like now that it's all said and done, just in general, how nervous were you going into this fight? Like knowing what's on the line and Israel putting all the pressure on himself, talking about how like this is this is everything. This is almost my whole career in a sense. And I do think Israel's legacy is a lot bigger than like him being champion or not. But how nervous were you going to this one? And then to double up on that, what did you think of that first round where, you know, Pereira was doing really well with those leg kicks? Uh I was very happy with the first round. I thought we won it. And on the judges' scorecards, we won it. The only thing that yeah. was concerning is he, he he landed a few lead kicks, which, mm. again, without giving us away too much, you could see the position that we were in relative to Pereira. We, we, we made a slight error in judgment. We expected, we tried to draw out that lead kick and we were trying to take advantage of his, he, he was basically in a very bad position to throw the lead kick and he took the bait and threw it. 
the problem I'm probably giving away too much. The boys are going to get to get at me, but <laughs> he, he, he 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 threw it. But what we didn't anticipate is we thought Israel would read that a lot better. And um, Pereira just I uh, know he's just awkward and he's very good. I mean, at this level, like you got to like again, your average fan just doesn't understand. Like Pereira took away. A, a good stand-up fighter. There's no preemptive movement, and if there is preemptive movement, it's intentional. It's because he wants you to think something. Pereira took away any preemptive movement. It became very, very hard for Israel to read that low kick, and as a result, he started um, not. He put himself in a position to bait the leg kick, and he started getting hit by it, which wasn't part of the plan. He made some adjustments on the fly when he turned southpaw, but mm. but I was not concerned because. Of course, we had another plan that if Israel wasn't able to read the lead kicks, standing in front of the lead kick, we had another plan. We had a multitude of plans that we were going to go to like we always do. So was it a big concern to me? No. Um, we were just going to have to adjust things if it went into a third round. That's all. Mm. So before you go, Dennis, and then just uh, the, the first part of the question, just the nerves, the nerves going in, knowing what was at stake. Uh, 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 I mean, if you if you're talking to me personally, I, it's always the fight in front of me, lads. Like, I was, of course, I'm nervous, and I, there was a little bit of extra tension there because because of who we're fighting, in mm. terms of the ability he has to take you out. Mm-hmm. That is the ultimate. This is one of the. There's, there's a few challenges in sport and in, in combat sports that are right up there, right up there. One of you're talking, one of them is fighting a five round MMA fight. One of them is competing in an eight man, fighting three fights in one night. Mm-hmm. One of them is fighting a puncher for 25 minutes. It can take you out in the blink of an eye um, at the start of the first round and the end of the last round. Mm-hmm. That's one of the ch- big challenges in combat sports that all fighters should face. And that makes you nervous. And it, But in terms of what was on the line, I don't really think about that. That's more an Israel thing. I mean, I don't really give a shit. Like, all the fights are the same to me, whether they're for a title. I take them all the same way. I prepare the guys the same way. They don't matter to me. So uh, I was nervous and for that particular reason. Mm. But that's, that's a great mindset to have. And I just got to find out for me. Like, I know in the back, um, Alex and Israel, they kind of, you know, hugged and, at the end of the day, looking back at this rivalry, it's it's pretty epic the way that this has turned out. Four fights now, the way Israel was able to finish it out. Where, where does this whole sort of journey rank for you? And do you do you look at this? Because I look at it as you know one of the most fascinating and in a lot of ways epic combat sports rivalries that we've had. I mean, it's across kickboxing, it's across MMA, it's across Madison Square Garden. It's across mm. the middleweight title. It's across the you know the kickboxing title, and it's also across a big part of their careers, which you don't see. Like two completely different fighters fought in Miami compared to the fighters that we saw in the first fight. In a lot of ways, how does this rank for you? Oh no, this ranks right right up there in terms of like it's 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 place in the history of MMA, UFC, and the history of combat sports. This is one of the great rivalries of combat sports. In my opinion, uh, I mean, you know, like th- these two guys are two of the best um, stand-up fighters, at least in the world, and they've had a rivalry for um, nearly close to a decade. It's right up there. It's one of the great, you know, people will look back and look at back at these four fights, and they'll be like, "Man, that was a proper. That was a. That was a proper. You know." Ali, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Ali Fraser type uh, rivalry. Mm. As as a as a fan, man, I mean, we we just enjoyed the shit out of this rivalry, and just like yeah, like like I said, the, the stakes on the line is seeing it all play out. Do you think Israel and Alex ever meet again? And do you think there's a need in any way, given that they're one and one in MMA? Uh, that, I, keep, I mean, they might, but they're not going to meet straight away. I think that's mm. insane. The, exactly what you talked about, the story, is what got Alex to this fight. Okay? Don't... People need to... And I'm sure smart people understand that. We... I, I respect the title. I think the title is prestigious. And I love, love the UFC titles. I think the, UFC, the person who holds the UFC title is the best in the world. Uh, best in the world by far. 
but the title also demands respect. And you can't throw a guy in there who has fought three nobodies, and then and that that that, that doesn't build the prestige of the title. Like it doesn't, like it doesn't do anything for the respect that we had for the title. And that was my argument before the fight, first fight got taken. It's still my argument now. Look at who Israel fought. Look at the five fights or so before Israel. Look at the names he fought to get his first title shot. Before him was Robert Whitaker. Look at the names that he fought, the killers that he fought to get to the title shot. Before that, you had GSP. Look at what GSP has done to get to the title shot. Look at look at look at who he was. Look at how he earned it. Uh, before that was Bisping. Look at who Michael Bisping has been for the UFC and the people that he's. This is the prestige that's come through the history of this title mm-hmm. in a linear fashion. And then, and then there's this anomaly. There's this guy who's fought three guys you have never heard of who gets a title shot. Well, we all know this is a business. There was a story there. There was a story there. And we needed to, and, and the UFC. Uh, the, the best promoters in the sport, they needed to promote that fight. And you had to get Pereira to Israel as fast as you possibly could. And they were in control of the sport. They raced him to the title, which was a smart thing to do from their perspective because you don't want Pereira fighting one of these other killers that Israel's had to fight because there's a good chance he'll, he'll be beaten. Um, so this is how this fight was created. But should, should it be a rematch based on that basis? Um, now, now you have to go back and do the hard yards. Now you have to be a UFC middleweight. You, now you have to go and fight for the best organization in the world. And now you've got to fight a murderous row to get to to get to this prestigious title, the ultimate title in the world that makes you the best fighter on the globe, on the planet. So now he has to go back and do that. Um, he used the story, he used it to get to where he is. But now, now it's time to be an MMA fighter in the best organization in the world. So. You go, you go and do that. And it's got mm. nothing to do with. It's got nothing to do with. Oh, we don't want to fight him because we're scared. Because of course every idiot on the internet. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with that. We fought him four times. Do you think we're scared to fight him a fifth? <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> it's, got to do with, it's got to do with what rightfully should happen and should have happened the first time. But as we know, the business of the sport is also important as well. Bit of a rant there, lads. I think I think you wanted to get something off your chest. That's why I asked the question because obviously this is what people are asking, is what people are talking I get, about. I don't want to get anything off my chest. That's that's how it is, mate. That's how the sport yeah. works. That's how the sport works. But as you know, the business of the sport is also important as well, and sometimes that takes precedent. Mm. Yeah, I can't argue with that, man. A lot of valid points, and for the record, I do agree with you. Um, all right, super quickly, before we get to what's next, I'm dying to ask you what actually is next for Israel. Before we do, calling all men, it is time to mind your manholes with Manscaped. Everyone is aware by now how much of a turnoff, major turnoff, nose hairs and ears hairs are for basically everybody. That's why Manscaped upgraded their brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 with improved blades and motor. You can feel the power of nasty nose hair annihilation in the palms of your hands. The improved Weed Whacker can now be found in their Performance Package 4.0 for absolutely no additional cost, baby. Save money, attack those nose and ear hairs by going to manscaped.com, using the code SUBMISSION, and you get your cheeky 20% off and free shipping. Uh, works a treat, doesn't it, Dennis? That's right, Cass. Make sure to manscape your life today. And again, that code word submission, 20% off and free shipping now. Jump on it today. Yeah, that's right. While you're saving money, NBA playoffs are around the corner. Now, I don't wanna I don't wanna tell the tired story, but you know, there was once a young man named Dennis. He didn't want to pay full price for the NBA playoffs with the NBA League Pass. So he changed his uh geolocation with NordVPN to uh, what was it, Malaysia or Philippines or something, where they pay less money for the NBA League Pass just due to the currency. And then uh, and then he got a cheeky little deal, didn't he? And you can do the exact same thing with Nord v- NordVPN for all sorts of things, including flights, different flights. Also, the same flights cost different things in different countries. Netflix, if you change your geolocation with NordVPN to, say, Mexico, you pay less money for the exact same Netflix and all sorts of other gifts and, and prizes. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff that people are shopping for. I've got a new house. I'm shopping for heaps of stuff. I'm using NordVPN to catch all the savings, baby. And best of all, when you use that VPN to change your 
geolocation. You can even watch other stuff on other Netflix catalogs like Netflix in other countries. And best of all, it only costs the price of a cup of coffee every month. So it's saving you money and you get, there's no speed throttling or buffering. So you get that same crisp, high quality internet that you're used to with the protection and with saving money. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. One of the best apps in the business, one NordVPN account can be used up to six devices. And if you guys are listening from New Zealand, man, you guys are overpaying for a lot of stuff, especially just compared to Australians. Jump on, get those discounts, get those deals, and get yourself sorted. What about your mum for Mother's Day? Get her sorted for Mother's Day thanks to NordVPN and this amazing deal. NordVPN.com forward slash submission will get you a huge discount plus four additional months for free. But listen to this. It is completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. So what we're saying is don't take our word for it. Try it today. Just give it 30 days to see how much it changes your life, how much it saves money for you, and you'll be NordVPN for life, brother. For life. All right. With that said, the bill's paid. Um, going back to you, Huge, just a simple question, man. What, what's next? What makes sense next for, for Israel? Uh, new blood. New blood coming through. Uh, the South African lad, who I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't watched one of his fights yet, but I do uh, remember the, 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 the lad. I did spend a couple of weeks with him at Tiger, and I remember him. He had a twin brother. Very, He was a very nice lad there. Yeah, now he's obviously got in the UFC, and he's doing the whole um, uh, uh, promotional thing. Um, but I think he's a nice lad. And uh, you got, uh, and then Strickland's still there. And Strickland will always give you an entertaining fight because Strickland will always give what the fans want when he should wrestle he never wrestles he stands up <laughs> he does the opposite of what you should do to win a fight but he's always, he's very entertaining yeah this kind of like new blood that's sitting around we've 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 done our like our hard yards are done like in terms of like we don't have to fight you know Pereira Robert um back in Victoria again like it's it's how is that has Hamza fought at middleweight yet? <laughs> I knew you were going to say. This. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a like, like we can't be ridiculous. This is the most prestigious title in the sport. Okay, uh, sometimes business takes precedent. I under that understand that, but you can like you're going to give a guy a title shot. Like you, you it, it, you're just devaluing. You're devaluing the organization. You're devaluing the sport. You're devaluing everything that we've stood for in terms of the middleweight title and what we've done, what Anderson's done, what GSP done, what Bisping done when he won the title. You're just devaluing all of that. Like, uh, you you need to ask serious questions instead of trying to get some clickbait. No, well, I guess the serious. <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. Do, do, do you think we're trying to get clickbait I, off you now, I, though? Don't blame your editors for your clickbait. That's what you guys always do. You're always like, "Oh, I don't decide the headlines." Well, you might not. We decide don't. The we, 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 we don't you write the articles. We don't write might, the articles. You might not decide the headlines, but you are the face of it, so you have some responsibility. So if you're not going to take ownership of those headlines, then that. It's wrong because that you you are representing those headlines because you're the face of that those articles. So let me let me ask you this huge because <laughs> Hamza did obviously call Israel out. So it's not like we're like hey like let's just throw Hamza in there because we want headlines. Like he did call him out, and Hamza is one of the big names coming into the vi the division. So my question to you is, you mentioned what you want to see Alex do to get another shot at Israel. What do you want to see Hamza do before you think he gets granted a title shot in an ideal world? Because you mentioned he hasn't had a, tight, a fight at middleweight. So what do you well, think he should do? <laughs> at the minimum, at the minimum, fight three guys that no one's ever heard of, like Pereira. That seems to be. <laughs> but obviously, <laughs> obviously, I think. I mean, I, I'm, not, I'm not arguing against fighting Kemza. I think Kemza will be a great fight. He's a big name. He's a challenge. And we're all about challenges. He brings his... He brings his High level MMA wrestling. I'm not going to say high level wrestling. High level MMA wrestling to, to the to the to the sport. That's a challenge, and I love the challenge. But I'm I'm arguing for the prestige of the. I'm arguing for the UFC, for the brand, for the sport. That's what I'm arguing. Like, comes that would be the, the great fight, and I just like Israel says to all these opponents, I hope you go out there and get the job done. Do your job so that you can see him. I would love that. It's not something like your average idiot out there, MMA idiot, has to understand. It's not when you reach this level, you're not trying. You don't shy away from challenges. 
you welcome them. But the challenge is so big because they're so prestigious. And if you take away the prestige by just by this nonsense, there's a certain amount of business and there's a certain amount of just what makes sense for the organization and and for the prestige of the organization and that it's the best title in the world. Now let's be like, yeah, a stupid question. I wonder, does, uh, does 205 or Jamal Hill, does that, is it a bit too soon for that? It sounds like you guys have sort of <clears throat> unfinished business at middleweight. Like at heavyweight. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Do you, do you like Jamal Hill as sort of like an opponent for, for Israel? Yeah. yeah. Or does, it, does it even matter for you guys? Like, do you look at it and go, oh, stylistically, who makes sense? Or is it, like you mentioned, sort of just the, the prestige of like, you know, now's the right time? And honestly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, every fighter, every fighter that you fight will have flaws and that's up to the opponent and the team to take advantage of them. So, Jamal Hill, I'd, I'll be, I'm not doing this trip, I haven't seen him fight yet i don't think um but i don't watch the fights i, I just watch my guys fight I, I don't watch ufc fights i watch my guys fight generally and that's it so um I'm sure he's very tough if you're if you're a world champion you're the best of the best i'm sure he's a very tough fight um i'm sure I, i've seen him at the after party i'm sure he's a nice fella um but it's not not about that like it's about the, it's the challenges mate when you get to this level it's about challenges let's do it sign look like, get it done boys can you get it done we'll speak to dana right now <laughs> yeah we'll say dana it's the clickbait boys let's get it let's get jamal hill and israel to sign you yeah bring it bring it on put them on the put them online i'll talk to them <laughs> all right i gotta uh, let's end on this one by the way i think this has actually been a phenomenal chat let's end on this one um <laughs> Shit, I lost my train of thought here. You, you laughed through me off. Um, what, what do you what do you want people to take away from this fight? Israel was you could see the emotions pouring out of him when it when it was all over. He spoke to everybody. He spoke to the world about you know people sort of enjoying these moments, but you can't have these moments if you don't challenge yourself in life. I wonder from your perspective, like what, what do you want people to take away from from this fight and and not just the fight, the journey that that Israel and you guys and the team had to take to get to this point. Everybody sees the highlight and the finish, but the, the journey to get here is so important. What do you want people to take away from, from you know, this this fight and the ending to this story? Uh, I want you, I want everybody to, 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 to understand that you are witnessing, you know, one of the best fighters uh, in, uh, on the planet right, right now. And I'm not going to talk about whether he's been one of the best fighters ever. You, people can decide that for themselves. But I want them to understand that this is one of the best fighters on the planet. And when you when you see these fighters, when you see these fighters, when you like these likes like Izzy and, and, and like Khabib and like um, <coughs> Floyd Mayweather, like it's it's like go out of your way to see these once in a generation fighters. Go out of your way. Fly to wherever you need to be. Go to the gym and see if you can peek in the training. Like these are special people or special athletes and they don't come around very often and i want people to understand what's in front of them and respect that and then and go out of your way to witness um something that just doesn't happen very often that's that's what i want people to take away from it i want to i want to say um you know like take away from it the way that israel loses and take away the way that he wins uh, is there is there another guy that always respects to the opponent? Even uh, even an antagonist like the Polo Costa, he gives his he gives out his respect to. You know, there's a lot going on there. Those guys got in each other's face, but at the end of the day, it's still respect and respect to Alex and everything he's done. What people need to understand is that yes, there's a business. There's a business here and it's a, it's a sport and they're trying to rip each other head up, heads off for the benefit of the fans. But these guys are humans. They have families, kids, and people that they're trying to uh, provide for. And they're trying to give them a better life and they're trying to give themselves a better life. That's all these guys are doing. They're not like, they're not any different from all of us in that respect. 
they're just trying to get ahead, get their family ahead and get themselves ahead so that they can live a, a nice and comfortable life. And that's all these guys are doing. Don't forget that. Don't dehumanise these guys. That's what I want. Well, Eugene, thank you so much for joining us, man. He's the guy behind one of the best teams in the world, City Kickboxing. I hope you and the team get a good chance to uh, chill out a little bit. I know you got a lot of big fights always coming up around the corner, but make sure to follow the team to see what is next. A lot of big fights coming up, including locally here at Hex, at City Kickboxing on social media. Eugene Berman, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you as always. Thanks, boys. Love you. Catch ya. Thanks, Eugene. Lots of love. Bye.